Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about uh, friction. What is friction exactly, you might ask? Friction is the force that opposes the sliding motion of two surfaces that are touching each other. Everything that moves is, a, is subject to friction. Companies have created a wide variety of shoes for this reason. Different shoes will offer more friction for a variety of purposes. For example, running, rock climbing, ice climbing, dancing, or even skating. Without friction, our world would be nothing like it is today. Every surface would be more slippery than a sheet of ice. Your food would slide off your fork, walking would be impossible, and cars would slide around helplessly with their wheels spinning. Friction happens because the surface of objects have bumps and dips in them. You might not be able to see these bumps and dips with the naked eye, but if you viewed the objects under a strong microscope, you would. The amounts of bumps and dips an object has will determine how much friction an object encounters. There are two rocks in this picture. The rock with more craters and dips would have more friction. There are four main types of friction that we will cover. They are static friction, sliding friction, rolling friction, and fluid friction. Do you think the polar bear slipped on the ice because there was a great deal of friction or too little friction? That's right, there was little friction causing the bear's paws to slip under him. The first type of friction we will cover is static friction. This is the friction force that acts on objects that aren't moving. This always acts in the opposite direction of the applied force. Take a look at the picture. If you were to push on the plant, the static friction would prevent it from moving. The next type of friction we'll discuss is sliding friction. This is a force that opposes the direction of motion of an object as it slides over a surface. Since sliding friction is less than static friction, less force is needed to keep an object moving than to start it moving. Take a look at this next picture. In this case, you push on the pot with, more, with the help of a friend with enough force to overcome the small the static friction. The pot slides across the patio as shown below. Once the pot is moved, static friction no longer acts on it. Instead, a smaller friction force called sliding friction acts on the sliding pot. Next is rolling friction. This is when an object rolls across a surface. Believe it or not, both the object and the surface are slightly bent out of shape at a very microscopic level. This change in shape is the cause of rolling friction. For a given set of materials, the force of rolling friction is about 100 to 1,000 times less than the force of static or sliding friction. Because of this, professional movers often use wheeled dollies to move heavy objects. Lastly is fluid friction. This force opposes the motion of an object through fluid. It should be noted that liquids are not only fluids, or are not the only fluids, I should say. Things such as air are also fluids as well. You would feel fluid friction when stirring thick cake batter. The motion of the spoon going through the batter is slowed by fluid friction. The faster you stir, the greater the friction is. When an object moves through the air, it is experiencing something called air resistance. This is also a type of friction. A skydiver would want to experience a huge force of air pressure whereas a bicyclist or a speed skater would not. In fact, bicyclists and speed, sk speed skaters might choose to wear slick racing suits to reduce this air resistance. This is the end of the friction lecture. Please rewatch this video for further clarification or refer to the forces chapter in your textbook. We'll see you next time.